This is a waffle cone, and this is how two high school students, Kelsey Johnson and Nakia Jackson from St. Mary's Academy, discovered an impossible proof to the 2,000-year-old Pythagorean theorem. Many mathematicians believe that using trigonometry to prove the Pythagorean theorem will create a circular proof because trigonometric proof depends on the Pythagorean identity. But by stroke of some genius, Johnson and Jackson used the law of sines in order to prove a squared plus b squared equals c squared by connecting a squared plus b squared to c squared using the quantity 2ab over sine 2 alpha that they arrive at using the law of sines. So in this video, I'm going to show you my interpretation of the trigonometric proof of Johnson and Jackson. I say my interpretation because I haven't seen their papers and I just based this on the diagram that circulate on the internet. So let's begin with this right triangle and let's label the parts as side A, side B, and side C, where side A is the smallest side. Then opposite side A is angle alpha. Opposite side B is angle beta. We now say that the sine of this angle beta is equal to the opposite side B over the hypotenuse C. Then let's reflect this right triangle across the vertical axis to form this other right triangle and let's label the parts and the angles. Now let's remember the law of sines. The law of sine says the sine of the angle over its opposite side is equal to the sine of the other angle over its opposite side and is equal to the sine of the third angle over its corresponding opposite side. If you now look at this triangle and using this law of sines, we can now say that the sine of beta over this side C is equal to the sine of this angle which is 2 alpha over its opposite side which is A plus A or 2A. Since we know that sine beta is equal to B over C, we can now replace sine beta by that value and simplifying, we now have B over C squared is equal to sine 2 alpha over 2A. And solving this for C squared, we now have C squared equals 2AB over sine 2 alpha. Let's remember this value because we are going to go back to this value later on. Then let's look at this figure. Let's create this other right triangle in such a way that the angle here is equal to this angle alpha. So this is angle alpha. This is a right triangle, and the remaining angle is the complement of alpha, which in our definition is the angle beta. So let's remember that alpha and beta are complementary angles. Now let's take a look at the ratio of the side of our original triangle. It's in the form A is to B is to C. Now let's consider this red right triangle. You have here angle alpha corresponding to this angle alpha. We have this angle beta corresponding to this angle beta, and you have here a 90 degree angle and a 90 degree angle. So the corresponding angles of these two triangles are equal, and by AAA similarity, this green and this red triangles are similar triangles, and therefore their corresponding sides are proportional. Notice now that for this red triangle, we know the length of the side, that is A plus A. But this side is opposite angle beta, which means this is our middle side. The hypotenuse is opposite the 90 degree angle, and the shortest side is opposite alpha. We now say that for the red triangle, the expression representing its middle side is 2a, because you have here a plus a. Now, since the sides of these two triangles are proportional, if we can find the constant of proportionality, then we'll be able to find the expression for this side and for this side of this red right triangle. How can we do that? From B, to get 2A, what is the constant of proportionality? In other words, what number multiplied by B in order to get 2A? That number is 2A over B. And this is now our constant of proportionality, so that if we multiply this A by this constant 2A over B, then we now know what is the expression representing side A. And that is 2A squared over B. We just multiply A times 2A over B. And that is now the shortest side of this red triangle. For its hypotenuse, we get this C and multiply it by the same constant 2A over B. We got 2AC over B and that is now the expression representing the hypotenuse of the red triangle. Then, let's construct another right triangle here. Again, this angle here is alpha. This angle here is beta. And this is a right triangle. And let's continue the pattern until we form what we call as the waffle cone. Notice now here that we have this 
right triangle again. The measure of this angle is 2 alpha. This is a right triangle because originally we have alpha plus beta, which are complementary angles. Then to find now the sine of 2 alpha, we need to find the length of the opposite side and let that side be u. And the length of the hypotenuse, and let's call that length as v, then we now form this equation. The sine of 2 alpha is equal to the opposite side u over the hypotenuse v. Now let's continue. Let's consider now this red triangle here. And we want to know what is the expression representing this hypotenuse as well as the measures of the other sides, knowing that this triangle is also similar to the previous triangles. So what we know about this red triangle, we know that the measure of its middle side is 2a squared over b. So this is now that measure. We want to know the measure of its shortest side and its hypotenuse. So again, we want to know what is the constant of proportionality. So from 2a to get 2a squared over b, what is that factor that we need? We need a over b because 2a times a over b is equal to 2a squared over b. So we need to multiply also this part here by the same a over b and we got 2a cubed over b squared and that is now the measure of the shortest side here. So its measure is 2a cubed over b squared. Now for the length of the hypotenuse that is 2ac over b times the same multiplier a over b and we got 2a squared c over b squared and that is the expression representing this hypotenuse. Then Let's move to this other triangle. We follow the same format. We know that the length of its middle side is 2a cubed over a squared. From here to go here, we need to multiply by a constant a over b. So we need to multiply this also by a over b to get the measure of the shortest side. And that is 2a to the fourth b cubed. So this side here is 2a to the fourth b cubed. And for the length of this hypotenuse, we get this expression and multiply it by a over b. We arrive at 2a cubed c over b cubed, and that is the measure of this hypotenuse. Then, let's move to the next triangle. So at this time, you can now see the pattern. The measure of the middle side is 2a to the fourth b cubed. From here to go here, we need a constant of proportionality. And you will notice that the constant of proportionality for the succeeding triangles would always be a over b. And therefore, we can now find the expression representing the shortest side, and that is 2a to the fifth, b to the fourth. So this shortest side here is 2a to the fifth, b to the fourth. Then for the hypotenuse, this expression multiplied by a over b, that is 2a to the fourth, c over b to the fourth. So that is now this hypotenuse. Then we can repeat the process, and we will arrive at these values by just keep on multiplying those values by a over b because that would be the constant of proportionality that you will find here. We are only after the hypotenuse. We are not after the measure inside this triangle because what you want to know is find the length of this side that is opposite to alpha and find the length of this side that is the hypotenuse of the big triangle. So let's find now the expression for side u. Then here, u is equal to this value plus this value plus all these values and these are now written here. Notice that this is an infinite geometric series. For the value of v, that is this c plus this expression and all these other expressions. And again, this is also an infinite geometric series. Now, we need to be able to find the value of this. Since this is an infinite geometric series, we want to know if this is convergent or not. And the way to do that is to find the ratio. The ratio of any two succeeding terms here would be a squared over b squared. And since a is less than b, then we know that the ratio here is less than 1. And therefore, we know that this is a convergent geometric series. That means we'll be able to find an exact value for this series. So. We can now write this in sigma notation this way. It's the sum of this expression, the first term, 2ac over b times the constant ratio raised to n minus 1, where n is from 1 to And using the formula for convergent infinite geometric series, that is equal to the first term divided by 1 minus the constant ratio. So this is our first term. This is our constant ratio. 
So the first term over one minus the constant ratio. Then let's simplify this. We add the denominator to arrive at this and then multiply the numerator and the denominator by b squared. b squared divided by b is b. b squared and b squared are canceled out. So we arrive at 2abc over b squared minus a squared. This is the expression representing the length of side u. So let's remember this value. Then let's go back to our expression for v. So again, let's get the constant ratio. So this term divided by this term, we get the same ratio a squared over b squared. So we can now write this in sigma notation. The variable c plus the sigma notation for this series, it's the sum of the first term, 2a squared c over b squared times the constant ratio raised to n minus 1, where n is from 1 to and using the formula for convergent infinite geometric series, we have the first term, which is 2a squared c over b squared over 1 minus the constant ratio a squared over b squared. And we just copy the other added c. Then let's simplify this. We can add 1 minus a squared over b squared to arrive at b squared minus a squared over b squared. Then notice that they have the same denominator b squared that we can cancel out. So we have 2a squared c over b squared minus a squared. And let's continue simplifying this. Remove the grouping symbol. Then to add this fraction, the common denominator is b squared minus a squared. Then this common denominator divided by 1 times c. So I about this. Then this common denominator divided by this is 1 times 2a squared c to I about this. Then distribute c to the binomial. Notice now that 2a squared c and minus a squared c are like terms that we can combine. So combining these two like terms resulted to a squared c. And there is a common factor c here that we can factor out. We now have our expression for the length of side v. So we have the value for side u, we have the value for side v, and we have this formula sine 2 alpha is equal to u over v. Let's put them together in our workspace. So we now have sine 2 alpha equals u over v. Notice again that their denominators are the same. b squared minus a squared and b squared minus a squared can be cancelled. And you have here a factor c and another factor c that can be cancelled out. So what's left is sine 2 alpha is equal to 2ab over b squared plus a squared. Then let's solve this for b squared plus a squared. So we have b squared plus a squared is equal to 2ab over sine 2 alpha. And by commutative property of addition, we can also write this as a squared plus b squared equals 2ab over sine 2 alpha. Now, we have here a squared plus b squared, and we have here c squared. And luckily, notice that both of them are equal the same expression, 2ab over sine 2 alpha. You have here also 2ab over sine 2 alpha. And so we can now put them together. And here is now what we got. Take note that these two expressions are exactly the same. Therefore, by transitive property, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, and that is now the Pythagorean formula that we would like to prove. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this is how these two high school students, Kelsey Johnson and Nikia Jackson, from St. Mary's Academy in New Orleans, prove the Pythagorean theorem using the law of science. So thank you very much, this is Landon Assistant, and we'll see you again in our next video. Bye for now.